You have three kilograms of water vapor at 100 degrees Celsius. What Q is necessary to condense all the vapor into liquid? All right, first thing to do is to figure out what our initial and final points are in our picture. So what would be the initial and final points in our graph? label the initial and the final points. Okay, now let's work on that a little bit. So your first guess is that this is the initial point and this is the final point. Now, the important thing is you have to ask yourself what phase are we starting at and what temperature are we starting at? All right, so what phase are we in initially here? What phase are we initially in? And what temperature are we initially at? Right, which is not this point over here. That's right. So instead of saying that we started at this point, we should say that we're starting at this point, because this is the point where we're still all gas, but we're at 100 degrees Celsius, which is what the problem said. All right, now what phase is the final position? What phase? And what temperature? We don't know. Kind of what does it seem like they're implying, though, here? What would be the, the most natural temperature to take? The same temperature? Yeah, because they just want to know what Q is necessary just to condense the vapor. So we kind of want to know the minimum Q that's necessary. So it makes sense that we just want to go from all vapor to all liquid. Maybe the question was a little bit ambiguous, but I think the most natural interpretation is that they only want you to change the phase and not change the temperature. Because they, were they weren't asking what Q is necessary to change the temperature. They were just saying what Q is necessary to condense all the vapor into liquid. Well, this is, and they wanted the Q that's necessary. We could do a, 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 a Q that's bigger in magnitude, but that would be more than is necessary. So this is the minimum that's necessary here. OK, that part of the question was maybe a little ambiguous. But the important thing is, when you're picking the points on the curve, you have to both make sure you have the right phase and the right temperature. Um, so for your initial point, you got the right phase, but we didn't get the right initial temperature. So we have to pay attention to that. Now, which of these two equations would be appropriate? Because we're changing phase. So let's go through together how to use that. Okay, uh, what should we plug in for Q? Uh, well, first of all, I should make a note to put in the dot here, because the formula is only going to tell me the magnitude of Q. I'm not going to plug in anything for Q, because that's what the question is asking. How about for M? Okay, and G, I'm sorry, L is another constant. L is another constant we've got to look up in the book, just like C is a constant. Remember that C is called the specific heat. L is called the heat of transformation. That's a logical name because we're transforming phase. So L is our uh, heat of transformation. Your book did a funny thing. It put the heats of transformation in a different chapter than the specific heats, even though they seem like they're related. Uh, we found the specific heats in chapter 16, but your heats of transformation are in chapter 17 on page 284. Now there's a whole bunch of columns there, so we have to pick out the right one. Well, which temperature are we at? Are we at the boiling point temperature or the melting point temperature? We're at the uh, boiling point. Yeah, even though we're not boiling, we're at the boiling point temperature. Okay. So, so it's 373 Kelvin? That would be the temperature, but what would our L be? 2257. That's right. What are the units on that? stands for vaporization. That's right. We can talk more about that in a second. Yeah, let's talk about those subscripts in a second. Okay, let's just finish up the problem for now, and then we'll come back to that. All right, so here we plug this in. Uh, now what? Why kilojoules? Because that's what L was in. L was in kilojoules. Why did you say negative? Because 
because we're decreasing the amount of heat so that the organic matter. Okay, good. Now the important thing to see is notice the formula didn't tell you that it was negative. You had to figure that out on your own. That was that's the only thing that this dot is supposed to remind us. This formula will only tell us the magnitude of this Q, and then it's our job to figure out the right sign. And that didn't give any trouble. So Q dot is 6771 kilojoules, and then you figured out on your own, Q without the dot is negative 6771 kilojoules. Because how do you condense something by removing heat? We need to condense it, so we do that by removing heat. You can see that because we're moving to the left on our chart. Well, Q is the horizontal axis. If you're moving to the left on the horizontal axis, you're not adding heat, you're removing heat. We're moving in the negative Q direction. Okay, so the formula just gave us the magnitude, and then you went ahead and uh, fulfilled your responsibility of putting in the sign. So then the Q would be negative 6771 kilojoules. We have to remove this much heat to condense this all into liquid. Okay, that's an important point. All right, so some uh, important things to notice here. Uh, let's see, first of all, you want to get in the habit of always using the heating curve anytime you do one of these heat problems, either a temperature change or a phase change. Now, the problems we've done so far were pretty easy, so it might seem like we don't need the graph. But unfortunately, we don't, we don't have time today to get to the hard problems, but for the hard problems, you really need this graph, so hopefully maybe we'll get to that in the future. So we're definitely going to use this graph for all these heating problems. It'll really help us in the hard situations. Label the initial and the final points. Notice how here, originally, we got the points wrong because we were getting the right phase but the wrong temperature. So make sure you're getting the right phase and temperature for your points. Uh, then you pick out the right equation. All right, and again, if you ever find, uh, in order to use the top equation, you have to look up the specific heat. If you lost that, you can look it up in the index. But this L here is the heat of transformation. L stands for the heat of transformation, and that's what our table is here, heats of transformation. Uh, let's keep looking at that for a second. All right, now you noticed here that there's really two different L's. Well, that makes sense because there's two different types of phase changes. Here's one phase change, and here's the other phase change. Uh, when you're doing this phase change, you use LF. And for this phase change, you use LV. What does F stand for? Yeah, good question. Uh, you would think so, but no. F stands for fusion. Oh. Because for some bizarre reason, uh, fusion means melting. Uh, fusion doesn't seem like melting to me, but somehow scientists think that fusion means melting. Okay, so F stands for fusion. Uh, you might think of it as for freezing here. And V here is for vaporization. But notice, even though this stands for vaporization, you can still use it for condensation. Because condensation is just the reverse of vaporization. Right? So you could just as well have called this LC. LC and LV are the same thing. The L that you use for vaporization moving to the right is the same as for condensation. Obviously, um, so, uh, so here, for example, we had to remove 6,771 kilojoules to condense. Well, we would have to add 6,771 kilojoules to vaporize. So they, that's why they don't give you two separate values here. One value is, would suffice. And by the same token, even though this stands for fusion, which is melting, you could also use it for freezing. You would just have a different sign. If you look at the table, it's not too hard to remember which one to use, because the LFs are next to the melting points, and the LVs are next to the boiling point. Well, if you're doing a phase change at the melting point, then you would use this. If you're doing a phase change to the boiling point, you would use this. Just remember, if we don't plug in the temperatures, we plug in the L's. So what does this number tell us about water? How could we interpret this? Well, let's use our same trick as usual. What number can we put on the bottom of this fraction? So what does this tell us? It tells us that if you want to vaporize a kilogram of water, you have to add 2,257 kilojoules. Or if you wanted to condense a kilogram of water, you'd have to remove 2,257 kilojoules. So that it's not too hard to interpret what these L's are telling you. Again, they're telling you, remember C tells you how hard it is to change the temperature. C tells you how much energy it takes to change the temperature. Well, L tells you how much energy it takes to change the phase. Just like C tells you how much energy it would take to change the temperature, L tells you how much energy it would take to change the phase.